Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, I get this question a lot. How much do you have to use your freeze dryer in order to make it worth the money that you spent on it? Well, today I'm gonna to show you the freeze dryer that I have, how much I paid for it, and how long it's taken me to make back my return on investment. Beef is the number one thing that I put in that freeze dryer. And towards the end, we're gonna do a little bit of AP math so you can see how quickly you can regain your investment just by doing beef or if you don't eat beef I would say the same with chicken or pork it may take a little longer to do it with chicken or pork with beef you can make your return on investment very quickly so let me show you what it is that I have I have the harvest right small freeze dryer and as you can see here it comes with the freeze dryer it comes with 50 mylar bags that I believe are quart size it comes with three trays it comes with a sealer it comes with 50 100 cc oxygen absorbers this one comes with a premium pump which mine did not so this here is actually a really good deal for the price we'll go over the price in a minute it comes with a quart of pump oil high pressure pump oil and this one comes with an upgraded oil filter which mine did not now as you can see here the small one goes for $2,375. When I purchased mine well over a year ago, about a, half, a year and a half ago or so, I paid $2,295 for it, if I remember correct. All right, so I didn't get such a good deal because this one comes with a high pressure pump. I really don't know too much what the difference is between the high pressure pump and the regular pump that it comes with. But as you can see here, this high pressure pump is an added $900 plus dollar value. So whoever buys this package right now for the additional $80 that I paid for mine is getting, in my opinion, a much better deal. Now this is all of the beef that I purchased for this one run on the freeze dryer. And it was actually perfect, the perfect amount to put through the freeze dryer. Let's take out our handy dandy calculator and see how much we got we have 4.35 pounds for a total of 12.78 pounds so just shy of 13 pounds and as you will see I used pretty much all of it I might have trimmed off maybe two or three ounces at the most because you really don't want to put a lot of fat into your freeze dryer if you're going to store that meat away for long term and as you can see, I spent a total of $102.12 to purchase this beef. And this is going to come in handy later on towards the end of the video. I think you're going to be amazed at how soon you can regain your return on investment from buying a freeze dryer if you concentrate your first several loads or several cycles on doing beef. This is what all that beef looks like after I took it out of the wrapper. The reason I wanted to show you this, ladies and gentlemen, is because if you notice, if you take a look at the edges of that beef, you'll notice that it's still a little bit frozen, and that makes it a lot easier when it's a little bit frozen, not completely. It makes it a lot easier for you to be able to cut it in small, manageable cubes. That way you can get the most out of putting it on your trays before you put it in the freeze dryer. This is what it looks like when I cut it all up. You can see that they're about half inch by roughly one, one and a half inch long pieces. And this is going to work out just fine. You can see also that I put a little bit of seasoning. If you take a look around the edges there, you can see that I put a little bit of seasoning on there. You can put whatever seasoning you want, but I just try to put like neutral seasonings in it. Like for example, most of the meats that we cook in our household, we always add adobo. So there's some adobo on there. I put some salt on there. I put some garlic powder on there and some uh, uh, dehydrated onions. And that's all that's on there. I try to keep it really simple. That way, when I use this meat, whenever I use it in the future, it's kind of like a clean slate. You can make whatever type of dish you want to make with it and just add those spices that you want to add to make it that specific dish. That way you're not stuck with having meat, for example, that you flavor with taco seasoning. You're not stuck with the equivalent of 13 or 14 pounds of that meat that you freeze dried that just has taco seasoning. 
You can have your taco seasoning, for example, in your prepper pantry. And then once you take this meat out, if you want to use it to have fajitas or tacos or whatever, you can add the taco seasoning and a little bit of tomato paste or whatever it is that you add to it later on instead of making the entire batch taste the same. Now after this, ladies and gentlemen, I just put this on high heat until it got hot throughout. And then I put it on the, my smallest burner at the slowest setting and I let this cook for probably the next three hours or so until the meat is completely cooked, 100% cooked. You can uh, freeze dry raw meats, but I see that as kind of like a waste of energy when you need your energy the most. So let's say for example that I freeze dried this meat raw, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you have to remember that you're gonna have to cook it later on. Well, let's say that when I take this uh, freeze dried beef out, let's say 10 years from now, because we have a major crisis going on, whatever it, whatever you want it to be, right? And uh, that's not the time where, when I wanna be expending extra energy to cook stuff. So yes, I have uh, fuels put away to cook in the event of a crisis but the more that you can save during that time that there's an actual crisis going on in my opinion the better off that you'll be so when i cook it now that fuel is available right it may be more expensive but it is available i can then avert having to use fuel in the future to cook the meat when it may not be available so that's why i always cook all of my meats before i put them through the freeze dryer i just put the meat in a strainer a strainer, a colander, whatever you call it. But if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, there is a plate that, that I put the strainer on top of. Now, I didn't just pour the meat in there from the pot. I grabbed a big spoon and I ladled it over one spoonful at a time, like one of those big spoons, not like a spoon that you eat with. And I try to keep as much broth in the pot as I could. That way it wouldn't overflow my plate. But I did this and then I just covered it up after it cooled down until I was ready to go ahead and put them in the freeze dryer. Once the meat cooled down completely, as you can see here, I have my trays ready for me to put the meat on. And the 13 pounds that we have here, just shy of 13 pounds, but it's about 12 and a half pounds. The 12 and a half pounds of meat that you have here is perfect as far as how much you need to fill three trays to capacity and still have a good cycle in your freeze dryer meaning that everything came out nice and dry and this of course is what it looks like once i put all of the meat on the trays and now you have two options you can either set these trays in your in your freezer or in my in my case i can literally set them outside because it's like negative something degrees on the day that i did this but i elected to go ahead and just put them in the freeze dryer and let the freeze dryer freeze them that way I wouldn't have to mess with putting them in bags and everything and then putting them outside and bringing them in once they were frozen. When you put them in the freeze dryer to freeze, it does take a few hours because the freeze dryer will bring the temperature of the product that you're putting in there to I believe it's like negative 7 or negative 10 degrees before it actually starts its cycle. Now this here is the pump that came with my unit and this is just a regular pump that comes with it. The least expensive one and what i have to say about this pump is that i'm very satisfied with it i've never had a problem with it i always maintain it they recommend that you change the oil in this pump in the manual at least the one that i have i do believe that it says like every 20 cycles but i don't do that i change the oil in it about every four to five cycles at the most and this actually uses a little bit of oil for every cycle so you're going to see the level go down just a bit. But as you can see there, the level on this one is correct. And I have just changed the oil on this a couple of days ago. And uh, it's ready to go. And the only thing that I would say about this pump is a little bit noisy. But if you take a look at the right-hand corner, you're going to see some, uh, some foam insulation. So what I did since this setup is like not very far from our living area, from our living room is, is I put a little bit of foam insulation on the two sides that were open on this shelf that I have it on. And it really reduces the noise down a lot. You don't even really notice it. You just hear a little bit of a, a noise in the background, but it's not really annoying or anything at all. And in all honesty, I've used this machine so much that I think we're just used to that noise by now. Now this video isn't really meant to be a tutorial 
on how to use the Harvest Right freeze dryer. If you'd like to see those videos that I made when I first got them, I have several ones showing what came in the box, one showing how to set it up, and then my first freeze drying experience with this freeze dryer. If you'd like to take a look at those, I'll just go ahead and leave them linked on a card on the upper right hand corner of this video if you want to check them out. But here, uh, the very first thing that you tell the machine once you want to have that cycle started is, is the food frozen or not frozen? And in this case, I just told you that those meats are not frozen. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the not frozen button before we continue. So once we tell the machine that it's not frozen, then all we have to do is tell it to go ahead and start the cycle. And this machine will let you know, hey, remember to close your drain valve. It's very important that you close your drain valve. If not, you're not going to be able to achieve a negative pressure inside of the actual chamber so closing your drain valve is very important or else it's just not really going to get anywhere it may freeze the food but it won't do any freeze drying now once you press continue and you make sure that your drain valve is closed or in opposites once you make sure that your drain valve is closed and you press continue it's going to start freezing immediately so you can see here that the internal temperature in the chamber is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit that it got down to before it started doing its vacuum freezing. Now you can take a look and see that it's it took 6 hours and 47 minutes before it got frozen enough to where it would start its actual vacuum freezing or freeze drying cycle. And right here you can see that it took a total from the very beginning that I press continue to the very end of the freeze drying cycle, it took a total of 32 hours, nine minutes and 54 seconds. Now here you're gonna get an option on whether you want your trays to be warmed up or not. I usually go ahead and click the warm trays button and I let it get up to about 120 degrees. And when I take it out at about 120 degrees, the, the actual product is kind of like at room temperature. It doesn't mean that the product is going to get up to 120 degrees. It's at room temperature. It's kind of a trade-off because once the product is done, and I'm saying product because whatever it is you want to put in there is going to be the same process. Once the product that you freeze drying is done, you're going to see that the sides of the chamber inside are full of ice. So with the, with the trays warming up, and the ice all around there, it's not going to warm the actual product all the way up to 121 degrees. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and open the valve. And when you open the valve, you'll notice a loud air coming out of the hose that's connected to your valve. And that's just the pressure inside the chamber uh, evening out with the ambient pressure outside where you are. Here is what the meat looks like on the trays. As you can see, it didn't really go down in volume. It just went down in weight. If you pick one of these up, they're going to feel like chalk. You know, like the chalk that you use to write on the board. It's really light, you know, and not very dense. That's exactly what this is going to feel like. It's going to be very dry. It's going to feel like chalk. But guess what? You could always pop one of these in your mouth and they're very tasty even when they're dry. So what I'm going to do now for this purpose, I don't do this every single time. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and weigh this to make sure that we can have a good number to go by so that we can compare it to what we started with, what we have now, and we can compare it to something that you buy from a third party. So I went ahead and washed my strainer and my plate and I put it on a scale and you can see that that scale is zeroed out. And here you can see that we ended up with a total of 47.65 ounces of meat once the water was extracted from it. I ended up with five of these small packs that you see here. Four of them were about 10 ounces each and one of them was roughly seven and a half close to eight ounces. So I ended up with five of these and each of these ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, this may look a little bit small and 10 ounces may not sound like a lot, but that 10 ounce uh, package or food saver bag that I have of this meat, that's an entire meal for about five or six people, depending on how much you like to eat, of course. So think of it that way. One of these small bags is going to feed an entire family. And as you can see here, I think it's important to point this out that whenever I do meats, I do not go cheap. 
I use a couple of oxygen absorbers instead of one. Even though I'm drawing most of the air out of that bag, I still use a couple of oxygen absorbers. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, in the future, I believe meat is going to be a very expensive commodity and this would make an incredible barter item in the future. Just think about it. If you're a meat eater and there's no meat to be found and you don't hunt, what would you be willing to give up? for a pack of meat that can feed your whole family of five or six people a really good meal. And before we get to the math, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to show you this is what it looks like inside of my tote. So what I do is, is I get one of these black and yellow totes, you know, the ones that you pick up at Costco, and I just work on filling it up little by little. Uh, I don't make it my daily mission to put a load in there every single day. No, I just work on filling it up little by little. And this right here is my third tote that I have in this location and it's about half full right now so the next time that I go to Costco I'll pick up another three packs of meat just like the ones you saw me uh, you know process this time around and I'll do it all over again and if you're taking a look at the left hand corner of this picture that's a big old bag of shredded cheese you know that three cheese or that three cheese blend that they have at Costco that comes in a a two bag five pound bundle that right there is five pounds of cheese and I'll tell you what cheese that's freeze dried like this it comes out great it, I mean I like eating it just for a snack it's nice and crunchy and it comes out great and it does reconstitute pretty well you can pretty much make anything that you would have made otherwise if you had not freeze dried it all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a little bit of AP math. And I think that those of you that don't have experience with freeze dryers are going to be amazed at how much money you save, even if you buy your own freeze dryer and how fast you can recoup your investment. So taking a look at our starting weight, we started out with 12.78 pounds. In ounces, that converts to 204.48 ounces. And in dry weight, once we freeze dried it, we ended up with 47.65 ounces for a total of 9.8 pounds of water extracted from that meat. So that 47.65 ounces of dry meat, that's like 99.9% .9 of the water being extracted. And all you're left with is pretty much just the fat and the protein. Now bringing it down to how much that meat cost me and how much it cost me to operate the freeze dryer and the bags and oxygen absorbers that I put into storing them for long term. Now the cost of the meat as you saw during the beginning of the video was $102.12. For the cost of supplies and the energy to run the freeze dryer it's a little less than $10. I actually broke down the cost of supplies on one of the videos that I've got over here on the right hand corner you can check that one out and I broke it down by energy by the oxygen absorbers by the bags all that kind of stuff even the oil that I use for it but it came out to actually a little under ten dollars for a total cost of one hundred twelve dollars and twelve cents that's what I've got into the meat the energy to freeze dry it and the supplies that I need in order to put it away for long term so the cost of the freeze dried meat that I made, the 47.65 ounces, came out to $2.35 per ounce. So you take the 47.65 ounces and divide it into $112.12, it comes out to $2.35 per ounce, which kind of sounds like a lot. But take a look at this. This is Mountain House. I just pulled this off their website today. For a 17 ounce can of freeze dried beef with no seasoning or anything like that on it, I think they maybe put a little bit of salt. I didn't check, but it's pretty plain. It came out to $6.17 per ounce for the Mountain House. Now, I'm not picking a Mountain House, it's just the easiest one for me to get to. But you can, I, I think you would agree with me that most other third party. Uh, sellers that sell freeze-dried meats it's about the same price it's pretty expensive so now let's take a look at what we paid for our freeze dryer and how long it would take for us to be able to recoup our investment on our freeze dryer now follow along ladies and gentlemen I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence but this is very simple math and I try to make it as simple as possible 
So here we see that we are saving $3.82 per ounce of freeze-dried beef compared to doing it ourselves against buying it from Mountain House. Now the cost of the freeze dryer, let's just say it's $2,400. Right now it's selling for $2,379 I think it was, but let's just say $2,400 to be fair. Right? You're going to take the cost of the freeze dryer and you're going to divide it by the number of dollars that you're saving per ounce. 628 is the number of freeze dried ounces that you need to make at a savings of $3.82 per ounce as compared to whatever other brand you're comparing it to, or in this case, Mountain House, in order for you to recoup the $2,400 that you invested into the freeze dryer. So if you take 628 ounces and you divide it by the 47.65 ounces that we made in that batch using 12.78 pounds, was it? That comes out to 13.18 cycles. So you can pretty much say that if you run 13 cycles of 12.78 pounds of beef that is freeze dried into 47 and change ounces of freeze dried beef, you would have recouped the investment that you made into the freeze dryer if you purchased a small one. If you purchase a larger one, of course, the numbers are going to change, but I would say that it's probably going to be pretty close to what it is now. So it's only 13 cycles. That's why I've often said that if you're going to get a freeze dryer, make sure that you use it because the more that you use it, the sooner that you will recoup the investment that you made in purchasing it. Now let's do a little bit of fun math and let's see how much 628 ounces would cost if you purchased all of it in Mountain House number 10 cans. So now that we know that we need to freeze dry 628 ounces of our own meats in order to recoup our, our investment, let's see how much it would cost if you just bought that same amount of freeze dried beef from Mountain House. So you take 628 ounces and you divide it by 17 ounces, which is what each of their cans bring. You would need 36.9 number 10 cans of Mountain House freeze dried beef. So if you take that 36.9 cans and multiply it times how much they're selling for right now, which is $105, you would come out with a total of $3,874 in order for you to get the exact same amount of meat that you yourself can do if you purchase a freeze dryer along with the beef. So ladies and gentlemen, for me, it's a no brainer. I do understand that it is an upfront initial investment that you have to make, but I can tell you this right now, I've already made my return on investment on that freeze dryer that I purchased, I don't know, about a year and a half ago or so, something like that. I've already made it more than once. I'm probably working on my third freeze dryer that I could have purchased by the money that I've saved freeze drying my own meats and beef of course being the primary meat that I freeze dry. Well, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off at that. I probably made this video way too long, but I really wanted to explain it to you down to the lowest level. That way you can all get a very good understanding for those of you that are thinking about purchasing a freeze dryer. I'm not uh, sponsored or anything like this by Harvest Right, but I do say that they make a very good product so far with my experience. Everyone has a different experience. I've heard some people say that theirs went bad after a while, etc. But I use mine pretty often and so far, so good. Having said that, have a great rest of your day and your weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place. And you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.